Okay, so welcome. It is January 15th, the day before spring term starts, and I am Professor Seafeld, and I am making a video to welcome the Data 101 online students who are in the spring first half course. Um, this is a fully online, but it does follow a schedule, meaning that you can't just kind of like do everything whenever you want. Um, it does have a schedule for each week. It is a first half course, which means it only runs for really seven and a half weeks, which is not very long. Um, and this obviously is the spring of 2024. Um, there are actually four data courses running right now. Um, this is one of them, possibly five, because there might actually be two sections of database. Um, this is sort of an exploratory course, and it's um, it's the Martin Luther King holiday. Everybody is welcome to take data courses. Um, there are no prerequisites for this course per se. Most of the students in here, it, it used to be that the students that took this course were primarily data um, majors. There's sort of a variety of students in here now, including um, some eStart students, some students from other programs who just wish to take this as an elective, as well as students entering data certificate and data degree in January. So um, nice mix of people in here. Ages probably go from 17 to 55, 60. Um, there are a number of students, older students that are working. There are also a couple eStart students that are in 11th and 12th grade. Um, so there's quite a variety of people in here. So um, everybody's welcome. Okay. Um, I, my name is Professor Seafeld. I am a full professor of math and data analytics at Nashua Community College. I've been affiliated with NCC um, for a very long time. I spent 10 years teaching part-time at Manchester Community College. Um, that was a while ago. And then I was gone for about six years completely um, because I was working down in Boston. And then um, four and a, a little over four years ago, this full-time position came up and I was hired and moved back to New Hampshire because um, I didn't really like living. In, it's not that I didn't like living in Boston. It's just I'm getting old and living in Boston was becoming difficult. So it was a great opportunity for me to come up here and sort of um, relax a little more. Um, that hasn't exactly happened, but um, so I am full-time at NCC. And what that means basically is that I don't do anything else except work at NCC. Um, so I'm available to students all the time, pretty much. Um, I teach math kind of sort of, um, initially my position was full-time math and data was a very small program, but data has very substantially grown. And so I'm trying to sort of emphasize data more and more um, and spend almost full-time now on data analytics, which is a growing program. Um, my career experience, I am very, very old at this point. I've been working for 30 plus years. I actually started my life working in biology labs because I didn't want a sit-down job at a computer. And I worked as a research technician scientist with a bachelor's and some graduate work in, in biological science. And then um, things happened and I sort of got career stumped and um, after about 10 years working in the lab, I ended up sort of rethinking things. Um, I actually became a computer programmer for like a year, and that was way back in 2000. And then like the economy sort of crashed and the IT industry wasn't particularly stable. So um, I ended up being a computer teacher. And then I went back to graduate school in statistics and math at the University of New Hampshire. The intention there was to do what's called bioinformatics and apply statistics to biological research, which I actually sort of ended up doing, except I still lived in New Hampshire. I became a math teacher for a few years. And then um, by this time, it was around 2007 or so. And then I got hired as a biostatistician at Tufts Medical Center, and I worked for almost a decade as a uh, biomedical statistician. Um, but I didn't actually end up doing like research statistics, bioinformatics. I actually ended up doing healthcare, medical, health insurance type stuff, um, which was just as good. It wasn't my original intention. So that's my experience. And I have a lot of experience in um, statistics, particularly applied to biology. But then also I spent some time uh, doing basically what's called institutional research. So I've done a lot of education research, got my doctorate in quantitative education, um, from Northeastern University and am up here. And primarily now, um, my primary interest from now until the end of my career, which is coming up because I'm getting fairly old, I've got um, somewhere between five and 10 years left um, for working. After that, I, I think that's probably all I can do. Um, but my primary interest is in data analytics education and running and expanding this program. This pr pretty much is my full-time commitment at this point. 
um, committed to these courses, the students in these courses, developing the program and working with NCC on this. Um, I put as sort of a museum some of the stuff that I've done. I've written a couple books. Um, I've authored or co-authored dozens, and I think it might even be closer to 100 publications. Um, because I was a statistician, I got to work on other people's research. Um, and so I got acknowledged for a lot of the work that I did. So I have a, a very broad experience um, working with data, particularly in education and biomedical research, but data is everywhere. Um, it wasn't really called data analytics until recently. It was I was basically a statistician. Data analytics has now sort of grown into more than just statistics. And as you take courses in the program, you'll realize that um, data analytics is not just statistics. There's a lot more to data analytics. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go on to Canvas, and hopefully everybody watching this video actually has Canvas access because you have to be able to get on Canvas in order to get the video. Um, there may be a couple people in here that are still getting set up, um, particularly if anybody adds after um, this, this week. So I want to show you the Canvas site, and um, the Canvas site we have here, the course syllabus. Now, when you open Canvas, Canvas is going to look like this. Um, you have a dashboard. Yours doesn't look exactly like mine. You have a dashboard, and then um, your courses will be like what's called cards. This one is sort of like pinkish red, and you click on it, and it should bring you to the home page. Now, very importantly, my email is on this home page. You can also email me through Canvas. Um, this email here it doesn't really matter which one you use. I tend to read this one more often than the Canvas one, but I basically read both of them. And so this is what your Canvas site should look like. Yours will look a little simpler. You have the student view. And so the home page, which is this, um, on the bottom there's this giant blue button and you click on that, it brings you to what's called modules. Every week is a module and except the syllabus. Now this video will actually be posted here. And so for every week in this course, there is a weekly module. And as we go through the syllabus, I'll explain that. But meanwhile, let's take a look at the syllabus. OK, so he gets back recording. Anyways, um, I should get better and better at making videos, but I try. So on Canvas, if you pull up in the syllabus, which a syllabus is a document that it's basically a legal contract between students, the college, and the professor regarding student expectations. So, and as you take courses, you should save your syllabuses. If you save nothing else from a course, you should always save your syllabuses. So our syllabus looks like this. On the top is just basic information. This is me, this is that. Um, do not use my phone because honestly, I'm not a phone person and I don't really sit in my office in front of the phone. Um, so email is a much better way. I still technically have a phone, but please don't, 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 don't use the phone. Um, my office is actually in Nashua Community College Library. I have like the corner of a library. I have a little office in the corner of the library near where the tutoring is. Um, I am there at other times as well, but officially I have two times a week when I am basically sort of open door um, for students and I don't schedule meetings and like attempt to do a lot of other things then. Um, and that is Monday afternoon and Friday morning. And that should sort of fit at least most people's schedules if you want to Zoom with me as well. Um, I can also Zoom by appointment at sort of limited times um, for students that can't make those two times. But you can either physically see me or you can Zoom with me. If you want to Zoom, please email me and tell me that you're going to Zoom because I don't just like turn Zoom on anymore um, like I did during COVID. The class is online, it's asynchronous, but we do have a weekly schedule. So it isn't like you can just not do anything for three weeks. Um, however, within a week, you can do stuff kind of whenever you want, as long as you're reasonable with um, posting on discussion boards and things like that. So what is this course? This course is basically an exploratory. It's not a super hard or super demanding course. It's basically a little tour of what data analytics is. That's really how I would describe this course. And it's sort of a course that like somebody either new to the data analytics program or unfamiliar with data analytics might want to take as like, is data analytics something that I want to do? What does data analytics involve? What will I study? What else is there to study after this? Um, things like that. So it's basically an orientation 101 course. The other thing that the course does is it does introduce you to our studio software and teach you um, some R programming. 
Um, if you notice in the corner of my little, like, who am I? I actually wrote the first book on R like 20 years ago. So I've been working with R for years and years. Um, the data analytics program is not super programming intensive, but we do give you an introduction to using R in R Studio because they are common tools. So this effectively is a big orientation course. That's really how I would describe it. Um, a lot of the students, basically what happens in this class, honestly, what I've seen is like 80% of the students love it. They continue, they do the degree and certificate, even if there are students that are taking it, like who hadn't even intended that. And then like about 20% of the students are like, no, I don't really like this. And that's fine. Um, so it's sort of like for you, I mean, this class is really sort of, my goal is to give you a feel for what data analytics is about and for you to decide whether this is something you like or not. Um, I got to tell you the one thing about data analytics that I'm super happy about, and I wasn't, even four years ago, I wasn't really realizing this. I think data analytics is probably the most foolproof thing to go into in the sense that um, the skills in data analytics are going to be invaluable, at least in the coming decade or so. And if you study data analytics, even if you don't get a job as a data analyst with, you know, the skills of data analytics apply to so many different things. I don't think you can really go wrong by studying data analytics. So the course description is what's in the catalog. It's an introduction to um, data analytics, as well as we will review some basic stats. Statistics one is not a prerequisite for this course because we don't use that much stats. I do sort of teach a little bit of the basic stats. Um, structure and types of data, data viz, data mining, legal ethical issues, and use of a statistical package. There are subsequent courses in data visualization, data mining, and data wrangling and applied data analytics. So this course is kind of like introductory level to what you will study in future courses. Um, the course competencies are what you will be able to do come the end of the course. And so this basically is you know, officially what is taught in this course according to the college. And then I actually assess um, through the various activities in this class, I basically assess these and then report to the college whether the students are learning anything. Um, so this is basically the list of what you should know in the end of the course. And um, right now this may not make that much sense, but if you go through this again, like the seventh week class, you'll be like, oh yeah, that's what we learn in there. Um, so that is the goals of this course. Um, essential questions, what is data analytics and what are the subfields? Um, really question two is sort of like, you know, I, I, I want to be helpful to people and, and some of you are in a position where you don't know what you want to do, but is, is this something you would like to do? Um, ethical issues are becoming bigger and bigger, not just for data analytics, but for society at large, using data and biases and inappropriate uses of data and all kinds of um, warm cans are opening up there. Um, skills and tools commonly used in data analytics. These tend to change, but they're not changing as much as they were. Um, so there's some stability that if you learn, R has actually been around for 20 years, as well as Python. It's been around for a long time now, too. Um, so skills and tools, you know, new ones come out, but there is sort of a, a, a bunch of stuff that is kind of like um, consistent. Um, there is a book. Now, I prefer that you buy the book. However, I do not teach through this book. Um, I prefer the book has become a little bit too old. People are like, well, why are you using a book that's too old? It's a very simple, short paperback book. It provides for students. This is a hundred percent online class. Um, so the book does provide some additional reading an additional resource. We follow sort of the general material of the book. I originally designed this course with this book. Um, like I actually used it a lot more, but here's what happened is um, the book is now too old in terms of the R code and stuff that came with the book. That no longer works and needs to be updated. Um, they haven't updated this book officially. I don't know whether they will or not. Um, if they don't, this will probably be the last time that I use this book per se, but I like to have something other than just the online course. So even though we don't like really, um, I don't assign things out of the book and technically, yes, if you never bought the book, I probably wouldn't know, but it is kind of a nice, short and simple and very, very readable additional resource in an online class. I sort of feel like there really should be a book and it's very, very readable. It's very, very introductory. It's a very nice book, except that it's outdated at this point. And it really isn't like a textbook thing. It's more of like additional reading. So um, it's, this is still sort of, it, it's a good book. I really, when I first got it, I loved it. It was, it was terrific, but it is a little bit, quote, old. Um, so you should buy it and read it, but um, I'm not like assigning assignments out of it um, per se. So it's sort of like 
um, additional reading. It's very, very good um, with our stuff as well. Software. NCC provides Microsoft Excel. Um, you should have Microsoft Excel installed because the a lot of the there's a lot of sample data and stuff that you can open in Microsoft Excel. Um, that is available. You can most of you can figure it out. It's available like through your email and through NCC. Um, you should be able to figure that out. Um, if you're in an Outlook email, you can like click on this upper left little like square thing. Um, I don't want to show you my email because it has stuff in it, but and then you can just click on it and literally you can just get Microsoft Excel as an NCC student. Um, the other thing that you want is Posit software. Now this first week, there's a little video on how to install this. I only have an NCC laptop with a certain operating system and certain technology. Some of you have Macs and stuff like that, and I hate to be like mean, but I don't know how to install everything on every system. So you are going to have to like fiddle a little bit with installing the Posit software. It's not super, super challenging, but if you have a computer other than mine, um, particularly Macintosh people, I don't like, I haven't seen a Macintosh in like 15 years myself that I've used. So um, you should be able to figure it out and come. I can probably help you during office hours, but um try to work with your computer and install the software and there's the first week's assignment is to install that software so um the first week is not a super long week because we really only have tuesday to friday the college does have a technology policy um and if you need a computer most people in this class don't need computers because by definition of being an online class it would be kind of weird um but if you need a computer and you have financial aid you can actually purchase one through ncc using your financial aid in other words you don't have to pay for it like your loans and stuff will pay directly um yeah so this is a hundred percent course with no uh, no live meetings um last term though i'm not sure that i will do this this term there is no project in this course but the data courses that have projects i actually now i'm doing um, a night where people can present live. And we did that, it was really fun. In data mining, there were 24 students and six people um, came and it was really fun that we had like two hours together and people presented stuff live. Um, so I might do one, there's technically no live meetings, but I might do at least one live event during the semester just to get students together. Possibly the students in this course, possibly also all of the students in data courses, um, of which now, um, there's 32 in this first half term, which I don't think there's any, no, there's no overlap between you guys and the applied data analytics people. So like you could actually meet each other. Um, so let me think about that coordinating one live meeting during the eight weeks. Cause I like to have one thing where people do actually meet that's on zoom, by the way. Um, so it does require you to work somewhat independently. I'm here, I'm available, but we don't meet in a classroom. So it's a little different. Um, so, and also I do a lot of, there's a lot of activities where you'll do, be doing discussion and videos and sharing things with each other. So I like to create sort of a sense of feel that we are interacting and it's not just, just, um, you know, just plain discussion boards where you don't just meet other people and interact. Canvas is the base for the course. Everything happens on Canvas. The structure of the course, except for this week, is that things start on Friday and end on Friday, but Friday is an overlap day. So, I will post stuff by Friday morning for the, the, the week, um, but the stuff in the prior week isn't due until four o'clock on Friday. Technically, if you really, really spent eight hours every Friday, you could probably do work for two weeks on Fridays. And some students do like some people, job wise, it just turns to, there's a lot of people in this class who are full-time employees. Um, so job wise, sometimes like that works for them. So there's flexibility, but not like, um, you know, I'm three weeks behind, will accept everything late because I'm on a schedule too. And I don't even like that to me, it's just kind of crazy. Um, so all week should be done when expected. It's not a self-paced course. Um, the course components, this is kind of a cumulative class. Some classes are kind of like you learn stuff week one, it doesn't really matter for week two. Um, this class somewhat, not like a hundred percent, but like you have to have R installed week one, but it's not like, calculus one where everything builds on everything else the weeks are somewhat independent so if you have a bad week and you don't do anything for a week i mean that's not a great thing because you're going to get some zeros but it's not going to like kill you in this class so if that happens please just pick up and come back the next week and do the stuff again um every week i post 
at least one video. I actually post a lot of videos. Maybe I post too many videos. I don't know. Um, so there's always like a lecture video for you um, as well as an announcement. There's typically like about an hour and a half or so of videos. Um, I like my videos. I don't know. I still sort of, I sort of teach this class as though we were together and like just I'm just lecturing to students that will watch the video later as opposed to sitting in front of me. So um, the textbook is primarily a reference. Weekly activities. When you first read over a syllabus, it's kind of like, oh, okay. Um, weekly activities will in include what I call labs. And actually, this course is considered a lab course. You do actually pay a lab fee for this course. That's why. Um, because if this course were on campus, it would be in a computer lab, and it is considered like a lab technology course in terms of credit hours and stuff. Um, so the lab activities for this course will involve our software. Um, there are short quizzes on what's in the videos. They're really easy, but I did have to put in, like, there has to be some sort of, like, formal assessment. So I did make up these little kind of silly multiple choice question, quizzes. Um, associated homework, which is going to be doing our work. Um, discussion boards. There are discussion boards. In an online class, you really do need a discussion board. Um, please try to participate in those. I grade those. Um, they're a good way to get to know people and, and, and interact. And, you know, a lot of people in this class, if you stick in the program, you'll be with each other for four or five classes. So it's nice to get to know each other. Um, something Sometimes there's something called practicums. Now, this class does not have a formal project. A lot of the other data classes have like a project but this class i chose not to have a project because it's just the first class it's an orientation course so to have like a, a a real analysis project for this class is kind of a bit much so instead we do these little short practicum assignments they're really easy but they involve you're doing something and i call them practicums because you do something practical think of it as sort of a virtual explore exploration field trip um basically what you're going to be doing is is researching something not really like formal academic research, but your first practicum, you're gonna research jobs and data analytics and present a job description of something you might like to do and share it with the class. I do want these to be recordings. Um, I don't want postings on these. I want you to do videos. You don't have to show your face, but I do want like people actually presenting and not just posting static information for these. Um, and so that's what the coursework entails. Um, the grading for this class is 30, 30, 30 and then 10 for the quizzes. Um, please contact me if you get a grade that you don't like. Usually I'm kind of nice. Um, sometimes students will email me like, I failed the quiz, can I retake it? Yeah, usually I'll let people. Um, the, quizzes, the quizzes aren't like a huge grade component. Um, I put them there just because there was no like testy, quizzy kind of thing. And I just, there really just should be. Um, the courses have to have some accountability um, going on. So, the rest of the syllabus is actually, or most of the rest of it, this is actually like NCC, like general stuff that isn't really just this class. It's like anything to do with that. Um, the library is a great place. You, I didn't even realize you can actually email the library. Um, they'll help you with stuff. Um, the tutoring center, um, I sit next to the tutoring center. I used to do formal math tutoring. I'm actually not doing that because for the most part, I'm not actually teaching math classes and I prefer to spend my time with the data students, which is you guys. Um, accommodations, Jody Quinn is a wonderful disability coordinator for students. Um, in an online class, sometimes people don't need to document disabilities as much as they would in a face-to-face -face class because you have like more flexibility with test time and stuff. Um, by the way, the like, quizzes are on time, like stuff, nothing in this class is really like constraint timed. So it meets the needs of students who might require extra time for things just inherently. Um, there's all kinds of assistance and help at NCC. NCC is not just a school, it's basically a community service organization, which a lot of people don't realize. It's part of the role a community college serves is we're here to help people in transition from high school to um, jobs or from job to job or to retrain adults. There's a lot of stuff that goes on. Um, we have a lot of ESL students. Um, Department policies. I used to be part of the math and science department. Data is kind of splitting off on its own. Um, so right now there is no like official like sort of department, <laughs> but that's okay. It, I'm fine with that. Um, college policies. We do not discriminate. Um, we have, we obey the laws and do everything that we're supposed to do. Attendance. What does attendance mean for an online class? Basically, um, everything that you do on Canvas is at least timestamped. 
I can tell pretty quick who's been on Canvas and who hasn't. Basically, what I do is I look for whether people have logged into Canvas and have turned stuff in and posting on discussion boards. Um, if you become inactive for more than a week, you'll hear from me. If you become inactive for like two or more weeks, I'll basically assume that um, either there's something wrong or you're gone. Sometimes I will actually email. Um, I don't know if, you, if you're actually in the data program, you've met Caitlin Brisson, who is the advisor for the program. Um, sometimes I'll get in touch with her and be like, you know, I haven't heard from the student in two weeks. What's going on? Um, so we are like a caring, you know, it's kind of funny because I actually, I taught high school and I actually think that NCC probably does a better job of following up and taking care of people than high school do. Um, even though you're not kids per se, although some of you are still high school students, but we do actually, um, you know, we look out for you a bit. So if you disappear, if something happens, we, we will try to help you and things like that. Um, forgotten log information, um, college email, all the sort of general policies. These, by the way, are little clicky links because the stuff was all written in the syllabus. Now it's like um, you can click on these and find all the policies. Um, if you are an eStart student, by the way, um, eStart is the collaborative program with the, with the system where um, high school students can take the college classes. If you're an eStart student, when you take this course, you're considered an NCC student. You're not considered a student of whatever high school or VLACs or homeschool. You are considered a regular NCC student, and the policies of NCC apply, not the policies of whatever your home institution is. Um, and then finally, at the end of the syllabus is the calendar. Now, this is a pretty short course. Um, this is, today is actually the 15th because I'm doing this beforehand. Um, but the first week goes from the 16th to the 19th. Um, it's kind of a half a week. There's not as much material, I know, because um, basically we're setting stuff up. Um, so you're going to, installing R and Excel are kind of the big things, mostly R. Um, there's two short lecture videos for you to watch in addition to the syllabus video and to get up and running. And I'll talk more about this as well. And then... If you read through this, this is the rest of what we're going to do week by week. And we talk about what data is. We review a little bit of basic statistics. Um, we talk a little bit about data wrangling, data mining, data visualization, ethical issues. And then the last week is um, the first week in March, the week before vacation. Um, the course ends. So it's a really pretty short course. And then I don't, like I said, I don't really do a project for this course just because I think it's too much for sort of explore, <coughs> an exploratory course. So that is what's posted in the syllabus. And um, so that is sort of like an overview of what the course is. And going back to the slides now, let's talk a little more about this. Okay. So your weekly expectations are going to be generally early in the week. And again, things are posted on Friday morning. You don't have to do things on Friday morning, but that's when I open things. Um, so some people will do stuff on Saturdays and Sundays. Some people will do stuff like Monday and Tuesday. But or, so sort of like I want you to before like the midweek, um, log in, watch the videos, take the quiz. Discussion postings really need to be done earlier. So if you don't do anything else before Wednesday, please do your first discussion post. Because if people don't do discussion posts, then like there's no discussion. Like if everybody posts on Friday for discussion that ends on Friday, that doesn't work. Um, and so sometimes there'll be a practicum. There's I believe there's three practicums. I might change that. I sort of, by the way, um, some of the stuff I do fresh every semester, some of the stuff, like some of the videos, if it's the same exact thing and the same exact lab assignment, I'll use the old video. So you'll see like some of the videos I'm going to do like just, you know, fresh and new like this one. Others of them might be um, the latest. I, all of these are fall. So the last time I literally redid everything fall of 2023. So everything is like within six months anyways. But um, I don't redo every single video every single term because that would take a lot of time. Um, so but some stuff needs to be more timely. Some stuff is like the lecture stuff kind of just the same. Um, and so the beginning of the week, you should watch the videos, take the quiz. If you do that a little later, that's OK. But prioritize doing discussion. Um, again, the book issue it's good to read the book, particularly because it's an online class and the book offers sort of, I mean, the book I think is actually somewhat better than my lectures. I don't know, maybe, but it's different. It, it adds to things, particularly with respect to the R programming. Um, 
So, and then later in the week by Friday, post responses to classmates and discussions, submit the homework, and if applicable, post a practicum. Um, the practicums, by the way, at least the first one, what you're going to do is submit it to me and then like it will become a discussion topic the week or so after, but not that week. Okay. Grading. Typically I grade stuff for the prior week on Monday afternoon, evening. Um, I sort of stick to a schedule myself. I do teach, um, I teach stats too, and I'm in charge of that course, which has two sections and a, a lot of students in it. Um, and then I have three data courses. So I have sort of a schedule too as well. Um, typically for you guys, I will most likely grade your stuff on Monday afternoon. And that's like the stuff that you submitted on Friday. Um, generally speaking, I will not penalize you for being sort of late unless um, here's my policy. Technically speaking, I could grade everything at four o'clock on Friday and give you zeros if it's not on a four o'clock on Friday. Realistically, I actually used to grade stuff on Friday night. I'm getting old and I want to like cook and make soup and stuff now on Friday night. So if you get away with turning in late, that's because I haven't finished grading. Once I grade something, you can't turn it anymore for the most part. The sort of exception to that is actually the quizzes. And that means that's because the quizzes are not. Um, I don't grade the quizzes. They're actually auto graded. I wrote all the quizzes from scratch, but I, they're coded so that like I don't have to go back and like grade stuff. But like programming assignments and stuff, what I do is I grade them all together for fairness and consistency. And it's actually really difficult for somebody to turn something in late after I graded it. And then like I have to like take my time off from like doing something else, and, like go back and like redo something that like I already did. And like it just kind of like ruins my life. Um, so particularly with the programming assignments, get those in on time. And I, I have the right to penalize you um, if you turn stuff in later than Friday at four. Um, realistically, am I the biggest stickler in the world about that? Probably not, but don't be a perpetual and habitual late person. Um, it doesn't really bother me if somebody turns something in late once or twice, but what does actually bother me a lot and sort of annoys me is if you just become like a perpetual late person, like you're always a week or two, you know, you're always behind, you're always turning stuff in late. That gets a little bit like um, not in my favor, if you know what I mean. Um, so your grades are posted on Canvas. Check and monitor your grades regularly. I occasionally goof up. Um, you don't want to like notice something come the end of the term or like afterwards. Um, grades in this class are generally pretty good. Like two thirds of students class get like A's and a lot of the rest get B's. What generally happens is that there's a whole bunch of A's and B's and then there's like a couple F's because people, those people just didn't like the class and those are the people that are like that. But that's kind of like what it's for. So part of me is like, okay. Um, and then there's one or two people in this class that are retaking it because they just didn't do anything in the fall class. But that's okay. I like you guys. Um, you can do that, by the way. Um, so anyways, help, help me. Um, I am on campus four days a week, um, at least part of the day, like, if you're on campus and want to meet with me, I'm there like Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and some Wednesdays. Wednesday is probably going to be like my more like work from home day because it turns out I um, occasionally have meetings on Wednesdays, but I don't have any classes or other things on Wednesdays. So rather than, it, and most people actually don't come to campus on Fridays. So I'm actually going to come in on Fridays for two reasons. One of which is the stats to research course meets um, Dave Rondo's part meets then. So the stats two people are all around on Friday morning. And also because your work, a lot of data students Fridays are like the time they have the most to do data stuff. Um, so Friday's kind of like day to day. Um, Monday and Friday, I am on campus in my little library office. If you're offsite, you can email me and I can meet with you by Zoom then as well as possibly some other times. Um, you can always email me. I'm, I'm more likely to answer email than I am. Like, if you tell me that you want to Zoom on Wednesday night, I'd probably be like, no, but I'll answer email on Wednesday night. Um, you can email me through Outlook, or that should say Canvas. I got to fix that. Canvas, there we go. Right. Canvas. Um, that little Canvas email thing, or um, Outlook email is the main email system. Um, the only problem with my Outlook email is there was actually a time when I got like 10 emails a day. Honestly, there's been a couple days when I've got 200 plus emails in one day. Um, and part of me like is like submerged. And so 
the Canvas email is strictly for students. So like if you send me an email through Canvas, in some ways it's better because I definitely like read every email that I get on Canvas. The Outlook email has become sort of so obnoxious that I get so many emails that um, forgive me if I like overlook your email and Outlook because sometimes there's just so much email that um, the other thing with the Outlook system is it does have a Barracuda catch. So, and that means that if you email from something other than ccsnh.edu, it could actually get caught in that junk mail trap. Um, I will pretty much answer emails 24 seven Monday to Friday. Um, my new policy though, is I probably don't want to answer emails on the weekends. I'm trying to get out of being a seven day work week person. Um, cause I have a dog and I want to pay attention to him. But, um, so generally speaking, that's, that's pretty much, um, how you can get a hold of me. And I'm, I'm pretty available. I'm not in classes that much on campus anymore because, um, I have three data classes. So I'm not, I'm not like teaching math in classrooms all the time. Like I was a couple of years ago. Um, so specifically what you should do week one. So on canvas, um, let's go back and forth to canvas here. So on canvas under modules, you go to week one, which is a short week, and everything is here for you. These are the two videos. This is the quiz. Um, the first quiz, by the way, I think I said it so you can actually take it multiple times. Um, not every quiz is like that, but the first quiz is kind of a warm up. This is the lab video. Now, this week's a little different, and basically, to be honest, you don't have very much to do. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to install R in our studio. Okay. I made a video specifically on this, so I'm not necessarily going to do it again. The link here clicks to it. So I clicked on this, our studio. Um, it's now actually called Posit. At first, I was kind of freaked out because they did this last year, and R used to be just R. And this is now actually so that you can write Python code as well. Um, we do not, by the way, we do not use Python directly in the data courses. There's a separate course that if you're a data major, you take the Python programming course as well. Um, but in the data courses, we strictly use R, and a lot of the data courses actually don't use any programming. Um, which is actually when the program first started, it was like, let's all program. But programming is actually sort of being phased out a little. So if you're actually a person who doesn't like programming, even if you just get through this course and do the basics in this course, um, you can probably still do the data stuff without programming anymore because there's kind of a move not to do as much programming. So when you go on here, you want to install R and R Studio. R is the language and then R Studio is the software. And again, I hate to be like not a helpful person, but I only have my system and I can't like, re I'm not gonna like uninstall and reinstall this. Um, so if you have a Mac and other things, your system behaves a little bit differently. So you are gonna have to fiddle. Um, I'm assuming pretty much everybody has a, a Windows or Mac, but some of you might have Linux or something. So you're gonna have to fiddle around and get R and R Studio installed. That will probably take you, I mean, it might take you 10 minutes, but it's probably gonna take you more like 45 minutes or so. Every week also there's a lab handout. Now there's nothing on this lab handout, but I just wanted to make one anyways to have it. Um, for future weeks, like week two, there's actually like a lot more in here. Um, but what you should do is get R and R Studio installed. Um, Excel, you should be able to install um, through NCC. The other thing I want you to have is some video capturing software. Now, built in Canvas is Course Media Gallery. I believe you guys can click on this. There's something called Kaltura. But honestly, I don't care. Um, I don't care what you use for screen recording. Um, I just care that you can make videos that you can share on Canvas, and whatever system you want to use, that's fine. This is the Kaltura system. I have to tell you, I don't really like Kaltura, um, but a lot of students will use Kaltura. But whatever you want to use um, to make short videos. Now, your videos, for the most part, they're going to be like five-minute videos. There's no if you take one of the more project courses and those are like 15, 20, but whatever you use to make a short video for the practicum stuff, that's fine. Um, you can play with this Kaltura that's built into Canvas, or you can just use whatever um, and make an MP4 file, I think they're called, and just upload it. Um, so that shouldn't be in this. I, I've had a lot of problems with Kaltura, so I just 
I've developed sort of a hatred for it, um, including that when I made Kultura videos, for some reason, I then couldn't access my own videos. So what I actually do is I put stuff on YouTube, in case you haven't noticed, and that seems to have solved the problem. Um, you can do stuff on YouTube, too, by the way. In fact, you might want to start doing like a portfolio on YouTube, um, which you can do either public or private. I actually make most of these videos public. Some of them are private, like this video might be private, meaning that like there's no reason for the public to view this video because we're not in the course. But some of the other videos are just all public because um, why not? Um, so anyways, so that is, this is the weekly lectures. This is the quiz. This is the go get our studio thing. Um, and then what I want you to read is just a screenshot of our studio um, set up on your computer, just as evidence that you did that and that you're ready. Because next week, week two, which I'm going to post Friday morning, um, we will actually do some programming stuff in R, but week one, no, we're, we're not, like, we're just setting things up this week. Then there's a discussion. And for discussion this week, basically, I want you to introduce yourself, and I want you to watch these really short, kind of short and sweet videos on what data analytics is and some issues with them. Um, and so that's what you're going to post. Now, I do want you to post technically by Tuesday, which is for going to be, like, your first day, but at least, like, post something as early as you can, Not hopefully not Friday morning, but before then. Um, and then respond and meet your classmates. There's a nice variety of people in this class. I'm not quite sure what everybody's background is, but I know there's um, there's somewhere between 15 and 20 people in here. I'm not sure exactly what that tally is going to be because I think a few more might come in Monday. Um, so, and then this practicum one, don't worry about this just yet. This is actually due the following week, not this week. And what you're going to do with this is you're going to find a job um, that you might be interested, like go on Indeed and find a job that uses data analytics and present a little video and mostly also to highlight the skills. And this is what you're going to use the media for. Um, and you can start this and do this if you want, but this isn't going to be due till next week. So that should be fairly simple. And that is essentially your work for this first short week. Um, and I hope that's that's doable. Um, again, this is, this is about half week's work with week's worth of work because um, this is not a full week. So, and also um, if you like this course, there are five data courses as well as um, some other things going on. The program is now developed into a certificate and a degree program. Um, things are going on. We're hopefully working on a transfer to Northeastern as well as UNH. Um, so it's kind of exciting and there's stuff to be involved in. And I will be around for you and feel free to email me or contact me anytime. And welcome to the course. I look forward to working with you.